A locally owned Muzzy Broadcasting Station. This is the True Oldies Channel. 92.1 FM and 1010 AM. Keeping the music alive 24-7. This is the world famous. It's the best music. True Oldies Channel. Sports on True Oldies 92.1 FM and 10.10 AM WPCN, featuring the University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point Pointers. UWSB Sports brought to you by Hilltop Pub and Grill. From burgers and fish fries to steaks, salads, and wraps for a great meal with outstanding service, it's the Hilltop Pub and Grill, Main Street, Stevens Point. Stevens Point Orthopedics, world-class treatment, hometown care. Skyward Incorporated, connecting parents and education. Portessi Frozen Pizza and Cheese Fries. There are many pizzas, but only one Portessi. Bone and Joint Clinic, with four convenient locations across central Wisconsin, including Clover, online at bonejoint.net. Sweats Oil Company, you'll find it all at Sweats Country Corner Blanker and Sweats Roadside Convenience Store, Stevens Point. Kerber Rose Certified Public Accountants, your strategic business advisor and accountant in Stevens Point. Partners Pub, Stevens Point's birthday headquarters, open 365 days a year. Great food, drinks, entertainment, and company. Paper City Savings, great rates for all your financial needs. Online at papercitysavings.com. Rock and Roll Cafe, open seven days a week with extended hours Thursday through Saturday. Stop in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Auto Select, quality, dependable auto repair and service performed by qualified technicians you can trust. Precision Cellular and Sound, your home entertainment headquarters, 87 Sunset Boulevard and Park Ridge, next to Walgreens. And by the Final Score Sports Bar and Grill, 2nd and Maria Stevens Point. Now, here's today's game. Good afternoon and welcome from the Quant Fieldhouse on the UW Stevens Point campus. It is time to tip it off here as the UW Stevens Point men's basketball team finally gets another home game, only their second of the season as they play host to the Flying Dutchman of Hope College. Scott Krieger alongside Jay-Z, John Selmer, the Dean of Hoop. And John, this is a very tough opponent and one that's coming off a loss last night they're not going to be happy if they don't play well here today yeah defeated uh, at Platteville last night Platteville of course uh, having a great uh, early start of the season hope's a wonderful program they're they're well coached uh, this is the sixth game in the series we do lead the series 5-1 last year we did win 82-74 but you're going to have to be at your best today we're playing a good team no question about it so here we go ready to tip it off great to have you along here this afternoon Brandon Spray will jump center against Preston Granger and we'll get it underway, and the tip is controlled by our pointer. Blake Erke into the front court with it. 
Left side to Spray. Looking at Bublitz cutting through the lane. Couldn't get it to him. They'll go to Kerner out in the left corner. Matt puts it on the floor. Sends it up on top to Kinez. Swing it to the right side. Erky drives it to the paint. Underneath, Bublitz goes reverse. The scores. Well, I think he wanted to go off glass, but was so well defended. He sort of threw that one up and nothing but net. Up it comes. With it is Calvin Hacker. He's out of Lovington. Michigan. Isn't that where the ferry comes in? It is. Yeah. Never been on the ferry, by the way. Riley Lewis bounces it over to Evan Thomas. Thomas down the lane, got by Spray, couldn't hit the shot. Rebound, Blake Erke. Erke crosses the timeline with it, takes it into the lane, down the lane, comes to a jump stop, kicks it outside. Out to Spray, his triple. Oh, well, Brandon with a double-double and that great win over Christopher Newport. Good start tonight. 5 nothing. Stevens Point. We're one minute into it. Into the front court, Hackers with it. Drives down the lane, tough shot, and a good one by Granger. The leading scorer for the Flying Dutchman, 17-8 per game. He will be a load, yep. Into the front court, Aaron Kadez out at the right corner, sends it out to Kerner, who wants a three, that's offline. You can see that right off the hand. Well, that's a bad shot, but missed that one badly. Evan Thomas across the way will go to Hacker. Started there by Bublitz. Gets the screen up on top. They'll lob it into Granger. Goes up and scores it. That's too easy. Yeah, nice high-low action on your right. That was too easy. You got to have better ball pressure on top. Yeah, sometimes we all say you got to play defense here or there. Sometimes it's all ball pressure. You can't make it so easy that they can do whatever they want. Kerner goes in on the baseline to Blake Gerke, trying to back his way. Kicks it out. Spray fakes the three. Pulls up from 15 off the rim. And the rebound out on the right baseline to Thomas. Let's we'll see if they go right back in to Granger. Hacker to the top of the circle. Stops. Stops it in over to the right side to Granger. Granger tried to go baseline. And that's an offensive foul. He just absolutely pushed over Blake Kirk. Well, I think you see the uh, the approach that uh, Hope wants to take this afternoon, Scotty. Bigger inside. And they're going to go inside. Of course, the pointers. More of a finesse team, not a big team. We don't have that back to the basket center, so trying to gain their advantage tonight going inside. Kublitz, left side, Berkey out near the corner. Gets the step on Thomas, got cut off. Into the lane, Bat Cat, I think he thought that Spray was going to cut inside. He went out, ball went right to Hope. Now we're a little stationary on that possession. Needs more cutters. Ranger to Lewis, got by Kinez, got back to it. Yeah, I'm out on top over the top of the circle. It'll go there with it is Hacker. Hacker kick out three ball, long rebound to the corner to Blake Erke. Erke will bring it up again. 17-10 to go. Here, Pointers had a 5 nothing lead. It's now a one-point lead. Erke out on the right wing. And that's trying to direct traffic. They were standing next to each other. That's not really a good sign. Aaron down on the right baseline, drives it into the paint. Got caught up, kicks it out to Turner. Six on the shot clock now, down to five. Erky's going to have to do something. Spin move, fadeaway jumper off the rim. No, rebound to Ryan Gam. Well, good defensive possession for Hope. Up front, it'll come with Hacker. Gam over to the right side, into the hands here of Lewis. I'll uh, check that, Thomas. Thomas at the top of the circle. Off to Hacker. Got a screen, got by Bublitz, goes up inside and Hope leads. Up, dribble penetration, got to two. See if we get some better movement, Scotty, on offense. Been stagnant. 6-5, Hope. Right side to Brandon Spray. Even point, you're right. They're kind of standing around. Turner to the right elbow. Kicks it out to the left corner. Erky didn't have time to load it up. Baseline cut by Spray, and he'll lay it up and in. Well, they doubled the ball in the baseline. Left backside open. Good cut to the ball by Brandon. Seven, six pointers. Hacker down into the left corner with the dribble. Keeps it, gives it off to Gam on a little pick and roll. Nothing available. Back out, it'll come to Hackard over to the right side to Lewis. Lewis guarded there by Aaron Kinez. Gam setting the screen high. Aaron got over the top of that screen without any trouble. Over there, it'll come to Thomas on the right side. Into the hands here of Granger. Granger against Blake. Trying to take him in. Ball tipped away by Brandon Spray. Nice deep. Brandon will bring it up. Stops at the arc. Looks, finds Erky. Wide open. Triple. Got it. Yep, they caught Granger deep inside. They want to come out to the shooter. Point back up by four at 10-6. Pointer shoot just 32% from the three-point line. Seems to be Blake is not too bad out there, or am I wrong? 
Gam over the top of the circle, got rid of it into the hands of Lewis. Lewis down into the corner, it'll go there to Thomas. Lewis behind the back, down the right side of the lane, pulls up off the rim, no, Erky with another board. That's like seven, seven of 16 on the year, Scotty, from the three-point line, that's better than 40%. Yep. That's not too bad, that's a good shot, you bet. Aaron Cadaz at the top of the circle, he'll try a three off the rim, no. Rebounded by Preston Granger out of Lansing, Michigan. Quickly up to Thomas, drives it into the lane. Got stopped up there, shovels the pass outside the arc. Three ball off the rim. Tipped out, Bublis comes out of there with it. Granger got a hand on it, kept it, make that Gam got a hand on it, kept it alive, but right to Bublis. Spray fakes the three, drives by his man, and missed the layup, but they're going to get a foul. So yeah. That's where I want Brandon to just go and explode. Instead of floating in there, he's got enough athleticism hammer it down over somebody and, and he and he floated just short of the rim there where he's going to have to lay it up you'd like to see him float for the dunk i mean get a little tighter and go into the rim itself but uh, not the ball so he'll get a chance to shoot a couple free throws yeah who am i to complain 14 24 to go we've got a media timeout pointers are up 10 6 let's take a 30 we'll come right back you know you see boy basketball on wcn once you realize that you're standing inside of a giant beer barrel, you'll know that this isn't just another restaurant. Now go on, open the door. And come on into the Hilltop Pub and Grill. Grab a hot off the grill burger with dozens of topping options, steaks that always satisfy, or go for the fish fry. Now you don't have to wait till Friday, it's served every day. The Hilltop Pub and Grill has 19 beers on tap, including 13 Wisconsin brews and a menu loaded with flavor. The Hilltop Pub and Grill, just west of I-39 and Highway 10 Interchange in Stevens Point. All right, back out to the Swan Fieldhouse. Your final score, Sports Bar and Grill scoreboard showing early here. Stephen Point 10, Hope 6. Plan your before or after game get together at the final score, second of Maria Stephen Point. Well, who are you to complain? You can complain all day, young man. It's your birthday. Okay, then I'm going to complain a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully I won't have to, right? Uh, uh, happy birthday, Scotty. Well, thank you very much. Well, Pointer is uh, four of eight to start the game. Uh, Hope just three of seven difference really is our two forwards, Brandon Spray and Blake Herkey, each with a three-point shot with two of four from behind the arc early on. Peter Timmerman in here early for Stevens Point. Well, Brandon on the year is a perfect 100% from the line because he's shot, he shot but one. And there's another thing that you'd like to see out of Brandon. He's not getting into the rim and getting into traffic enough if he shot just one free throw in five games. And he's two out of two. Yeah. So there you go. You would like to see, you know, Brandon uh, get more aggressive, Scotty. I'd like to see him, you know, get four, five free throws a game. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. He's certainly athletic enough that he should, in my opinion, again, go to the basket a little bit more. And he's a fine free throw shooter, so doesn't get any easier than that 15-foot strike. Got them both. It is 12-6. Stephen Point with the advantage right now. Well, so far, so good. I don't know if tough, he wants tough to. turnover for, for uh, the flying Dutchman, Scott. Into the ball game, Tyler George out of Ada, Michigan, for the uh, flying Dutchman. They'll lob it inside, tipped away. We're going to get a foul in there. They got it into 6'9", junior Sam Bree out of Lansing, Illinois. And he was fouled in there. Well, beautiful lob feed by Kelvin Hacker, junior guard out of Ludington. I was going to say, tough turnaround for for the Dutchman to have to, you know, drive all the way to Platteville and stay overnight and get up here and play us at 3 o'clock. A tough assignment. Yeah. And yet, I'm sure they had an option on what time of day they wanted to play. You know, primarily, Coach likes to play 7 o'clock games. We're talking Coach Semeling. Uh, but I'm thinking Hope wanted to have an opportunity to get back home yep. you know, with a few hours extra. Last weekend, we got to a hotel at 12.30 in the yep. morning and had to play it, too. Yep. So then it looked like uh, it just back moved into the corner. Murphy runs baseline. Ooh, he missed the shot. Might have been fouled. Yeah, well defended. It was well defended. Yep. So into the front court, it will come with a basketball. Hacker drives it to the elbow, got it underneath. Loose ball, layup in and out. Don't tipped up once. No, loose underneath. Zach Boots comes out of there with a good, strong Zach Boots on that one. Gotta like that. Blake Berkey holds it on the wing, gets a step on Gam, goes inside around the horn. Peter Timmerman open for a three. Got him, Peter. Out of Iowa. 
Well, they were excited when they got Peter Timmerman, and it takes some time, usually, to figure out what Stevens Point's trying to do. And you don't get on the floor if you don't play both ends of the floor here at Stevens Point. Uh, out of Dubuque, Iowa. Well, they're Catholic High School. That's almost with time. Yes. Zach Moots with the foul down at the other end. The blind Dutchman flew down the floor. Got there in a hurry. Owner misses the first of two free throws. He's out of Angola, Indiana. 73% free throw shooter. They shoot pretty well as a team except for the big guys. Granger is just 20 of 37 on the air and Ryan Gamp's guy, 4 of 15. They yeah. said, kid, you might not want to let's go around the basket. You're better off to follow him <clears throat> with numbers yeah, like that. Zach yeah. Moose brings it up for Stephen Point leading 15-7 right now. Left side to Timmerman. Peter Holtz puts it on the floor, brings it near the top of the circle. Off it'll go to Kerner, into the hands of Moose. Moose trying to drive along the lane, shovels the pass out on the bounce to Kerner. Kerner at the top of the circle had it stripped away. Now you're down to six seconds to go. Aaron Kinez trying to make something happen. Out to Moose, you gotta get a shot. It's in the air, off the rim, no. Long rebound, pulled in by Honer. Well, he took it right to the end of the shot clock and didn't get a really good look. Honer snaps along the right side of the lane. Pinned down, got rid of it, off it'll go to George. George back over to Honer, looking inside. They want to go to Bree, can't get it there. Timmerman doing a good job. Off on the left wing with the dribble now, Hackers. They'll lob it underneath, so Timmerman that time lost Bree, who missed the bunny and got it back and laid it in. Again, Peter turned his head, didn't see it coming. It's all high-low action. That, that feed came again from Chris Hackers. Who's ever got him on top has to get a lot further into his body. And as moves a three off the rim, it looked good, but it just didn't get there. Yeah. Rebound comes off to the flying Dutchman. Open shot behind a ball screen. Hacker, 17 footer off the front of the rim. Bublitz secures the rebound for Stephen Point. He'll push across the timeline, top of the circle, down the right side of the lane. Spins it up inside, and they're going to call a foul, but it will be a non shooting foul on the flying Dutchman here. Still Top Pub and Grill from Burgers and Fish Fries to Steak, Salads and Wraps for a great meal with outstanding service. Still Top Pub and Grill, Main Street, Stevens Point. And of course, Monday, the Pointer Hoops radio show. We're on from 6 to 7. Come on out, join us. If you have questions for Coach, you get to meet, uh, you can ask those. You get to meet uh, a couple of our players as well. That's all Monday night. Inbound, Garrett Nelson out on top, and it'll go left side. Kinez pulls up for the jumper. That was airmailed by Aaron. Right open. Up it'll come. Clayton Dykehouse into the front court, got it underneath, tried to throw it off a guy. Kerner had it, but had it stripped away by Honer, then Spray strips it right back. On ahead, it'll go to Kinnett. Coming in off the left wing, he has it stripped away and out of bounds. They're going to say it's off Aaron's leg, and it'll go back to the Flying Dutchman. Oh, great play by Dykehouse. He just ran hard down the floor, he got the deflection off of uh, the knee of Aaron Kinnett. Yep. That's good hustle. Take the bucket. 15-9, Stevens Point. Dykehouse with it over the top of the circle. Picks up, gives it back out high. Right side, fight it. Down low, they got it inside. Double clutching going up no. And Granger will go to the line. They're getting a lot of inside touches. Yeah, and Granger, a tough matchup so far for Matt Kerner. Biggest difference, Scotty, is the strength. He's just out-muscling Matt and uh, is having his way so far. Brandon Spray with the foul, his first. Team fouls are even at three. Ranger makes good. He has five points in the ball game so far. Stevens Point Orthopedic, Sports Medicine, and Physical Therapy, world-class treatment with hometown care. Second free throw good as well. Yeah, you say somebody's not a particularly good free throw shooter. Take that. Yep, made them both. Aaron Canales, front court. It's been a while since the pointer scored. Spray working over the right side down to the baseline. Kerner trying to back his way in, turn around jumper in and out. No, can't buy one right now. And then the flying Dutchman lose it out of bounds. Yep, and off of the hand of Pikes. Just an unforced break for the pointers. Nobody in a white uniform anywhere near that rebound. Yeah, we've uh, got stuck it with 15 to 6 when they've scored the last five. Back in will come Erky and Bublitz for Stevens Point. Inbound to Garrett Nelson, up on top to Erky. Blake holds it there, finds Spray in the corner, drives it into the lane, down the lane, had it stripped away and out of bounds, and it went off, time off of Brandon's play. Got to be a little stronger with the ball. Yeah. He made a nice move, but then they were able to knock it out of his hands and off his leg. 
You got quick hands in there, that's for sure. Now tip away. Nice job by Garrett Nelson. And what do we get? We're gonna get a timeout. Timeout called by Stephen Point to save the possession. Yep, we'll get a probably a 30 here, I'm guessing. Good fight again on the floor. These two teams are battling. Well, you would expect nothing less, right? right. All right, 10.49 to go. We're going to stay right here. Your final score, Fort Fire and Grill scoreboard, showing Stephen Point leading 15-11. Enjoy a sandwich, your favorite live nation, at the final score where Long Island Saturdays turn into bloody Sunday. Uh, some of the stuff that we have seen I really like, and then obviously there are things that you wish were going a little well, different. The concern right now is, is uh, for me anyhow, is Flying Dutchman getting their touch of getting their point in the paint beating this inside for much easier look. Most of uh, our offense has been out in the perimeter, getting nothing inside. And if you can't, you can't continue to, to live with three-point shooting, you're going to have to get, you know, whether an open floor or whether fast break, however, you're going to have to try to get inside some. If generally speaking, you don't live with the three-pointer. You might get away with that on a one-game or two basis. Blake Kirky goes right side to Garrett Nelson. Tried to use the screen, got bottled up. Out on top of the spray, long pass left side, boots into the lane, jump stop, kick out Garrett Nelson down the lane, and he threw it away. Threw it away. He just kind of threw to his spot, hoping somebody was there, and there was no one. Yeah, and he went into the side without any idea what he was going to do. That's where you like to see a guard guy that has that little floater out about six, seven feet. That shot was available to him. Yeah, if, if, had he launched that, it would have been open. Dykhouse goes. Over to the right side into the hands of Lewis. Back to Dykehouse in the right corner. Trying to work by Garrett Nelson. Top of the circle. Bounces it in. Tipped away by Erky, but picked up out on the wing that time by Fyfus. Lob it down low on a bounce. It'll be off the pointer. So now we've switched matchup. Of course, uh, Turner on the bench. And so we're going to go smaller but quicker. And we know Blake plays pretty effectively post defense just because he's quick in there. 15 11. The lob comes in. The Ranger got it underneath. Short jumper off the glass is good by Fikas, and they continue the comeback at 15 13. Yeah, big to big. Just played above us seven in a row now for the Flying Dutchman. They'll go to Erky into the corner to uh, Garrett Nelson. He is, well, he wasn't fouled. I thought he was. It's just going to be back to Stevens Point as it goes out of bounds. Back in Thomas for the Flying Dutchman. Oh, well, we lost at Platteville last evening by a score of 82 uh, 68. And a game dominated by Platteville's guards. Yeah. Uh, Quint, well, they have Quentin Shields. I mean, I mean probably I, the best guard in the conference. I, and I don't think even probably. I, in my my mind, he clearly is. It will go into the right corner. Erky, seven on the shot clock, out to spray. Brandon, three is going to be short, but he retrieves his own rebound. Spins on the baseline out to Nelson, moves around the horn, it'll go. Bublitz gets a step, drives it in, lays it off the glass. Uh, such a good slicer. He's in Bublitz for two. 17 13 pointers. Dyke House over to the right side, Granger, trying to work against Turkey. Long cross court lob, jumper on the way, and buried that time by Evan Thomas. Good by Granger. It's nice when you rise above everybody, you can throw that court, cross court pass. 9.04 to go, pointers up by one. Bublitz up the spray screen, double team, got it back to Brandon, down to the left baseline on the block, to a cutting move. Left hand layup rolls off the rim. Good play, good cut. This oh. Cross court, it'll go here to Thomas in the corner. Boots got back, nice defense. They'll go on top with it as Vikas. Drives it down the left side of the lane, out to the corner, back over to Thomas now. Thomas against Boots. 17-16 pointers. Vikas to the left elbow. Outside, it'll go there to Dykehouse. Trying to get by Garrett Nelson. A little up and under. He'll score it. Now you got, got Nelson up on his toes and out of position. And once he lost that cushion, it was an easy duck and under. 12-2 run here by the Flying Dutchman. Over to the right side, it'll go to Garrett Nelson. Having a little trouble with the dribble there. Now Bublitz having trouble with it. Tried to go behind the back. Picked away. Double team. Micah will take it in at the other end. Blocked by Bublitz and then out of bounds. It'll be off the pole and back to the pointer. Well, didn't give up. Ran the floor and got the block. And we've got immediate timeout. 7.57 to go in the half. 
Colt 18 and the Pointers 17. Let's take that one minute break. We're coming right back. UW Stevens Point Men's Basketball on WPCS. Locally owned and operated, Rock and Roll Cafe is a proud UWSP sports sponsor. Open seven days a week, 6 a.m. till 3 p.m. with extended hours on Friday. Come in and try their rock star skillets. Going out for lunch or dinner? Give the delicious gourmet burgers a try with them all. Rock and Roll Cafe also serves pasta, salads, wraps, and more. And, of course, their Friday fish fry. Keep it local and have your next breakfast, lunch, or dinner at the Rock and Roll Cafe. Rock and Roll Cafe, where you're always treated like a rock star. A 50s-style diner with delicious homemade cooking. Located at 2801 Stanley Street, Stevens Point. Auto Select is your dependable auto repair and service destination with qualified technicians you know you can trust. Schedule an appointment or stop in to visit them at one of their two Stevens Point locations on Highway 10 East and on Church Street. Whether it's a nail in your tire, noise under the hood, or just an oil change, Auto Select gets you back on the road. Good luck to Spash and Pacelli Sports this year from Auto Select. Quality, dependable auto repair and service performed by qualified technicians you can trust. to go here in the opening half. Stevens Point trailing the Hope Flying Dutchman by 1. 18-17 is your score. No players had the biggest lead of the game. It was 9-15-6 as you mentioned, Scotty. We've been outscored 12-2 since that time and uh, the Flying Dutchman enjoying their first lead of the night. Yeah, we tried to get inside a little bit and haven't been successful and then missed some outside shots and already five turnovers. Spray on the left wing takes it to the lane. Then back out on the perimeter. It'll go to Aaron Kinez in the corner. Blake Kirky out to Garrett Nelson. And we're going to get a charge on Garrett Nelson, the defender. Kelvin after anticipated the pass, and he beat him to the spot. Aaron's having a tough start to the game here. Garrett Nelson. That'll bring Matt Kerner back in. I'll tell you what. Back at the uh, junior. Nice-looking guard. Up it will come. Hackert over to the right stack, gives it off to Thomas, top off the screen. Back over to Hackert, started there by Boozwood, flopped down. Oh, oh, he sure did. Sure did. Yep, he had a left ranger with a big time push off. Yeah, he fired himself. You don't even know if that's intentionally or just such a move when the ball is lob fed to you. you. You leave your spot to go get the ball and that left arm swings out. But boy, from my advantage point and from the officials, it sure looked like uh, they pushed him away, so offensive foul. Let's that's, see. Yeah, that's his second, yeah. Aaron Kinez up to Kerner. Come on, pointers. Time to score here. Blake Kirky down to the baseline. Out to spray. Around it'll go to Ethan Bublitz. Bublitz off the Kerner screen is going to take a triple off the rim. No, we're living and dying right now from the perimeter. Up it'll come with Thomas. He's been just a 21% shooter from out there. He's at his best when he kicks to the Hacker rim. Over to lay or over to lob. Taken away on the backside by Aaron Kinez. Kinez, left side, Bublitz wants another try at a three, and this one he's got. That one was in rhythm, off the break, wide open. Pointers back up a pair at 20 to 18, and an illegal screen on top. Ball down Sam Bree. That'll be his first in the fifth team now on the Flying Dutchman. 69 junior. They have a little size and some bulk. We have a challenge for the whole night for the player. He asked the official, what did I do? And the official showed him, you stuck your leg out. That's why you got the foul. Not because of the contact per se, but you stuck your leg out to create it. Those top screens, a point of emphasis. We see that call at least once a game. Kinez down to the left baseline. Crossover dribble, can't go baseline. One or two out to Matt Kerner. Got a step, pulls up a little eight footer. Got it. There's Matty. Good job off the move. Little eight footer. Front of the rim, left side. Pointer back up four. Hackard into the front corner, right uh, front court, right corner. That's a lot of words for me, I guess, today. I'm getting older and I can't talk anymore, John. Over to well, the left side. They, they, say, to they say it happens. Yeah, it does. Down low, a little too easy. Sam Bree got free for an easy lay in on the pass and gap. I know a lot of people waiting for it to happen to me. That'll never happen. <laughs> Randy <laughs> Spray goes left. Erky was open for a moment. They're guarding him up with Thomas. Using some uh, quickness out there. Yeah, Bublitz down the left of the lane. Got pushed pretty good. Spray, Kerner, triple off the rim. I thought it was going to be good. Hackard with the ball. Looked good from here. Just got the back rim. Quickly up. Lewis left side. Thomas up on top. Got by Brandon Spray under late getting to the rim, however. Brandon with a rebound. Now there was a trip, trip there, Scotty. No, I don't 
Brandon trying to go coast to coast, kicks it back out to Kerner, runs it to the free throw line and draws some foul. Free foul number six. six. 522 to go. The pointers will be shooting the rest of the way. Well, hopefully everybody having a good day. Beautiful day out. Yeah, it's actually not, not, a bad, day. not a bad day. Compared to what's coming next week, they That's tell me. They say, yeah. Weather report is stay indoors next Wednesday. You got that right. South Haven, uh, Michigan, is where Joe Wilkins is from, 5'11 junior. He checks in. Kinez goes in to the left corner to where uh, Ethan Bublitz. Bounce down to play Gerke on the baseline. Tried to back his way in. Goes up and lays it in. Just overpowered George uh, and Tyler George. As you said, they were using quickness against Blake. That time, power won over quickness. 24-20. Winners give up an easy one to the hoop, and we're going to get a block on Aaron Kinez. He was inside the, the circle, I think, when the uh, contact great. came. Yep, that becomes an automatic foul. But that one really shouldn't be on Aaron. That's on whoever was well, guarding was, him out on the well, was Matt Kerner was out on the three-point line and just got blown by. Matt uh, giving up, you know, that quickness. Needs to give himself a little more cushion. Tough yep. matchup out there. So back at the line is Honer, and the first is good. So on our end, power beat quickness. <laughs> Come down to this end, and quickness beats power. Yeah, yeah. it was just mad he got beat so bad, and Kinez tried to cover up for him, and he was too deep. Free throw won't go. One out of two. Spray with the board. Pointers up by three. Bublis into the front court. Ethan working dribble. Trying to use a Kerner screen. Got to be careful. That's almost a moving screen. Erky drops it in along the uh, lane. Kerner with a jump hook. Can't hit it. Spray's going to get a foul. I like fight. Brandon trying to. That's his second foul. Yeah. Trying to get an offensive foul. He'll have to play with 444 to go. That'll bring Luke back in. Bray will have to sit, as John just said. Of course, the pointers are not a big team. Nope. So we don't have a lot of fouls to get down in the post. All right. Gam inbounds, and the uh, Flying Dutchman will bring it up. Down by three. See if they go right inside here, Scotty. Wilkins off on the right wing. will go there to George. Got a step. Goes inside. He tries a reverse layup. Tipped out. No. Still loose. Picked up there. George underneath the basket. Sends it out to Gam. Up on top, it'll come here into the hands of Lewis. Lewis holds it there. Wanted to go inside. Sends it over left side. Wilkins. Kick out a deep three. And buried that time by Tyler Joy. NBA three. Yeah. So far that he's almost a one-hand push shot. Yeah, get it there, but it was nothing but net. It'll go to Blake Kirky. To the free throw circle, Aaron Kinez. That was just one of those. He didn't get a, a rebound off that miss because you're giving up too much size and that kept it alive. Bublitz at the top of the circle. Kicks to the corner, open for Kerner, got it. That has been a couple threes today. That can hit out there. Just got to get confident to do it at 27-24. Up front, it'll come here with Hacker. Over to the left side, corner with it. Back up. Oh, uh, yeah. Got a good team foul now on Matt Kerner. That'll be his first. See, and there's a guy, we saw that last week, you know, in, in uh, Virginia Sky, when Matt picked up a very similar foul, the player is going away from the basket in north scoring position, and, he, and, he, and he's got his arm reached around. And just no need to give the official the opportunity to make that call. Well, Gam, front end of a one and one here. The ball goes according to plan, which it doesn't. He was the guy that uh, 415 coming into the day. He'll make both, you know that. 27 25, Stevens Point. We'll get a second one here. 337 to go in the half. And he missed that one. Blake Gerke gets the rebound. It'll go off the right wing with Zach Moot. Hope does a good job of getting back defensively. Yeah, fundamentally sound team all yeah. the, every time we see him. You are correct. Moot trying to work dribble maybe a little too much. Up it'll go to Erke. Getting a lot of dribble going and not a lot of passing. Yep. Erky pinned down, got rid of it to Moot, sees an opening, kicks it out, Kerner wide open, three in and out, no. Rebound, tip, Honer comes up with it. He'll push it up the right wing, Erky hustles back, Honer kicks it out, left side, running baseline, got cut off. I think he traveled with it, got it to Honer, tipped away by Bublitz, picked up by Erky. Blake will take it to the other direction. Takes it down the lane, tried to go up, and okay, just out of bounds, back to the point. Looks like the attack, good D. I do like that. I mean, they weren't going to pull it out and wait. They went, 
they almost got a, a layup out of it. Well, 255 to go. You're up two. See if you can uh, get a little run here to end the half. Inbound to Bublitz out on the left side. Off the Yerky screen, gives it back to Blake. He wants the three off the rim. No. And the rebound into the hands of Tyler George. He'll bring it all the way up to the arc and then gives it off to Gam around the horn. Left corner, it'll go out there. Wilkins. Wilkins against Tinnett. Throws it up on top now to Lewis. Pardon me, Hackers. Going against Ethan down the left of the lane. Under late. Put back is good and a foul. Gam will go to the line for a potential three-point play. Yeah, another second chance opportunity. Interior rebounding. We've been a pretty good rebounding team up until today, Scotty. Out rebounding our opponents by seven. But uh, the bigger, heavier front line right now of the Flying Dutchman continues to be a problem. You got that right. Gam will go at the line, uh, go to the line, I should say. The foul is on Bublitz. Missed that. Ethan with a rebound. Well, you got numbers if you want to go for it. Bublitz all the way to the other end, and they're going to call a charge. And just like that, uh, he picks up back-to-back foul. Up in a matter of six or seven seconds, he gets the first and then the second. Of course, he's our leading scorer at 20.8 points per game. So not the same team without Ethan on the floor. Yeah. But he had his mind made up. He was going to get to the basket, and unfortunately, sometimes that costs you. So that will give the ball back to the flying Dutchman into the front court. Dyke house got by Garrett Nelson into the lane. Shovels the pass back out. Open three. Buried by Biker. So he wanted to no point. <laughs> no point in that sequence was he guarded. I'm not sure who was supposed to be there. Blake Kirky pointed back down in this game by two now. Garrett Nelson. Across the way to Kerner. Mack drives it into the lane. Jump stop. Kicks it out to Kinez. Kinez holding at the arc. Gets it off to Garrett. Ten on the shot clock. In on the baseline now. Erky turned around. Jumper got one. A big bucket. A needed bucket. See if we can do something in the defensive end. Or even at 29, it goes in deep to Bree. Bree kicks it out. Spike is for three off the rim. Over, the and over the back on Bree. It's going to be his second. Good box up by Matt Kerner. He's going to go to the other end and uh, shoot a front end of a bonus. We'll take that. Huh? I don't know. At one point, we only had five team fouls. We picked up four in a hurry. Yeah. We have nine at this point. They'll shoot the double bonus on our next foul. So Kerner at the line for a one and one. In football, by the way, Whitewater stays alive. They beat Mary Harden Baylor down in Texas 26 to 7. Kicked it off at noon. Kerner's free throw is good. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Yeah, as the saying goes, Matt. Shooting perfect on the year from the line. He's, good. He's a good shooter. Can even this game, well, pardon me, can give you a two point lead if he makes this one, and he does. Pretty much the player of the game we expected, Scotty. We knew, we knew uh, that this one would be a hard fought one, probably down to the wire so far. That's it. Like House goes left side. With the basketball is Hacker trying to get by Zach Moose, picks up, sends it out to Dykehouse over to the right wing, it'll go there into the hands of George. Holds it there to a cutter, that's Gam, got in deep, tried to bounce it out, tipped away by, ooh, I thought it was Bob Percy, but no, it is going to be a pointer basketball. Gam threw it down the baseline and there's just nobody there. Why does he do that? Skyward Incorporated connecting parents and education. Matt Turner, he initially on there was able to recover well enough to force the pass. You know, when you're 6'8", like Matt is, you can give a little bit of ground, as you were saying before. You're tall enough to still bother shots, even if they pull up on one. You've got to start doing that a little bit, and I'm sure that's what they're trying to get him to do. Blake Erke with the dribble long out on top over to the left side. It'll go to Garrett Nelson, back over to Kerner in the corner, runs it to the lane, bounces it off. Open shot, loops, and he finally finds the range. Yeah, it looks like Turner. It was a penetration that was allowed him to draw help defense and then kick it to the back side. So point back up by five, and now an offensive foul in the corner on Dyke House. Yes. Matt Turner been our most active player, our biggest player, is doing the, the most damage driving with the basketball, getting into teams and then finding two teammates. Don't forget at halftime, a chance for you, with it, for you to win. A couple of pizzas from Fortessi, both of pizza and cheese fries. Garrett Nelson had it tipped away, got it back. Looked too much dribble from Garrett. Over to the left corner, it'll go to Erky. Back up to Kerner, back to Garrett. 
Looks at the right side, man-to-man defense. Garrett got a little shove, got rid of it to Turner. Out to Erky, eight on the shot clock, trying to get something to happen. Blake takes it inside, had it tipped away, goes out of bounds. It's going to be pointer ball, but only three seconds to shoot. Yeah, you can you can catch and dribble a couple, or you can even make one pass, but you got to do it in a hurry. All right, see if you can get a decent look. Kanez will be the inbound. They'll get it to Erky, who will launch at the horn and off the rim, put back by Garrett Nelson. Everybody yeah. went to the ball, realizing the shot clock for, for Hope. Scotty, and they forgot to rebound. 36 to 29. Dyke out down the lane, kick out to Gam. His jumper in and out. No Kerner with a rebound. Got sandwich there, and that is going to do it. We're at the end of the first half. Nice little run here at the end of the half by Stephen Point. Wonders will take a seven point lead into the locker room. It is Stevens Point 36 and Hope 29 on your final score Sports Bar and Grill scoreboard. Watch your favorite team. Enjoy the daily food and drink specials at the final score second and Maria Stevens Point. We'll take a two minute break. Coming right back. This is UW Stevens Point men's basketball on WPCN. Once you realize that you're standing inside of a giant beer barrel, you'll know that this isn't just another restaurant. Now go on, open the door. And come on into the Hilltop Pub and Grill. Grab a hot off the grill burger with dozens of topping options, steaks that always satisfy, or go for the fish fry. Now you don't have to wait till Friday. It's served every day. The Hilltop Pub and Grill has 19 beers on tap, including 13 Wisconsin brews and a menu loaded with flavor. The Hilltop Pub and Grill, just west of I-39 and Highway 10 Interchange in Stevens Point. Hey, sports fans, Scott Glinski of Skyward here. From the court to the field, the ice rink to the putting green, on the track and in the classroom, Skyward supports all local and state athletes. Since 1980, our advanced technology solution has been helping school districts improve outcomes, reduce costs, and achieve success for students. Visit us online at skyward.com to learn more and see how Skyward empowers school districts across Wisconsin. Best of luck to all local sports teams this season. Did you know Ligaman & Willie CPAs is now Kerber Rose Certified Public Accountants? Kerber Rose has been providing businesses with a variety of accounting services for over 30 years. We continue to offer tax preparation services, business valuation, payroll processing, audit, as well as QuickBooks consulting to individuals and businesses in the Stevens Point area. Interested in learning more? Call us today to schedule your complimentary accounting review. Call 715-341-3232 or visit our website, KerberRose.com. Why get a remote starter from Precision Cellular and Sound? Hear it from a local customer. My name is Bill Held. Last year, I surprised my wife with a remote start for her new mom van. I went to Precision Cellular and Sound and couldn't be happier with my choice. They were fast, friendly, super helpful people from start to finish. Now in the depths of a Wisconsin winter, she starts her van from her office and it's comfortable right when she gets in. No more melting in the summer either. It was an excellent Christmas gift and I owe a huge thank you to Precision Cellular and Sound for the assist. Precision Cellular and Sound, located at 87 cents Boulevard next to Walgreens, Stevens Point. All right, welcome back out to the Quant Field House. We're at half, and UW Stevens Point is leading the Hope Flying Dutchman 36 29. Basketball always a game of runs, and we certainly have seen that through the course of this first half. Boy, a good beginning, great ending. We uh, trailed 29 27. In the last couple minutes there, Scotty, was uh, well, half, half of our bench on the floor. We all scored the Flying Dutchman 9 nothing to end that half. Take a little momentum into the locker room and lead by 7. We got out to a 9-point lead, 15-6. to six. We end on that 9-0 run, and uh, Hope wins the middle up in the, second, or the, in the first half. Uh, they outscore us in the middle by 11. So both teams have had uh, their moments, have had their runs, and well, consequently, uh, we're enjoying a seven-point lead. Yeah, I'll take that seven-point lead. Yeah, it's, it's certainly been a challenge of uh, Hope's bigger line. I think changed for them when Preston Granger went out, Scotty, with his second foul. Average is 17, eight a game, and seven boards. And uh, frankly, we don't have anybody that matches up with him very well. And when he went out in the second, second foul, that uh, kind of opened things up for us a little bit. But good first half by the pointers. Yeah, I'll take that. Uh, absolutely. We do have a little bit of a uh, foul situation with both Bublitz and Spray having two personals, but then Hope has two personals on both Preston Granger and Sam Bree. They're two big guys, so I don't know, uh, you know where the balance is there. I guess we'll play it out 
the final 20 minutes here. Brian, Brian Gam also with two. Well, yeah, well, I can't add, you know, but close enough for me. They get 15 fouls in there with those big guys, though, and so far they've used up six. So uh, we'll see how the second half plays. Unfortunately, uh, you know, for Ethan, he picked his up in about eight seconds. Yeah, it wasn't much. There was a region on a rebound, and then he forced his way into a charge on the other end, and just like that. Yeah. And then, you know, he's so valuable, but that's the way he plays. His motor never never stops, but so valuable to us. Without Ethan, uh, you know, we're, we're a different basketball team, fair to say. He, oh, absolutely, and I'll be honest. To me, he looks more like he did in his sophomore year than he did last year. It wasn't like he was bad last year, but I think he was still a little leery, you know, off the leg injury and how it was going to respond, and now he just... He's going full bore. He's doing the things, going to the basket that we saw as a freshman in the sophomore. I mean, he can create in there, and he's, well, he showed us twice already here in the first half on some pretty creative moves. That's a fact. You know, Scotty, I don't think he was 100% at any time last year, even though he was, you know, pretty healthy coming off the, the ankle surgery. But not only, you know, was it was he not 100% physically, but it takes a while to get your confidence back after that kind of a, really pretty horrible ankle injury uh, so this year he, he is very much I agree to what he was I think he's fully healthy at this point and uh, speaking of that uh, Mason Hazard to our freshman a really good freshman we hope to get back dislocated knee uh, he tells me his therapy his recovery is coming along pretty well maybe he'll be a at a schedule it would be great to see him uh, back by conference time but uh, we'll see what happens and fans if you didn't know Bo Rosenthal joined the team today a local product from Spash was on what three state championship division one yeah. as the point guard, and uh, he's due to our program and uh, was cleared this week by whoever does that at the conference office. Uh, I don't know that we'll see Bo today, but uh, he could be a really nice addition. Yeah, I, I would agree. We uh, we may or may not see Bo today, but you will in the foreseeable future. I do think he's a, a pretty solid player for you. Well, so, 36-29, we're going to take a 90-second break, and when we come back, we will get you an opportunity to win a couple of pizzas, courtesy of Portessi Frozen Pizza and Cheese Fries. Our trivia question is coming up. This is UW Stevens Point Men's Basketball on WPCN. Sir, we noticed that your right rear drive duels are mismatched by 5.30 seconds. It's all about the details. And at GCR Tires and Service, we see things differently. You hear that your tread depths are mismatched and think, what are they trying to sell me now? We see a rotation opportunity that prevents a regular wear, keeping you safely on the road and keeping more of your money in your pocket. At GCR Tires and Service, we measure safety down to the PSI. Visit GCR Tire and Service 2700 Church Street, Stevens Point for all your automotive needs. If you're suffering from hip, knee, or shoulder pain, visit the specialists at Stevens Point Orthopedics, formerly Klasinski Clinic Orthopedics. The experts at Stevens Point Orthopedics will work with you to get you back to what matters most, like your family, hobbies, or career. From your orthopedic issues to sports medicine and even in-house physical therapy, trust Stevens Point Orthopedics to help you win the fight against pain. Stevens Point Orthopedics, world-class treatment, hometown care. Call our office today and schedule an appointment or visit StevensPointOrtho.com to learn more. Are you ready to own your own home? Then Paper City Savings is a place to go. We provide the convenience of applying in person or online, and our friendly home loan professionals will help you every step of the way. If owning a home is in your future, contact Paper City Savings today. Locations in Plover, Wisconsin Rapids, and Nakusa. Paper City Savings, a proud sponsor of area sports, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Back out at the squat. We are at the half. Our UW-Stevens Point men's basketball team with a 36-29 lead over Hope right now. Baker City Savings, proud supporter of our community with locations in Clover, Wisconsin Rapids, and Nakusa, helping to bring this game to you here today. And as I mentioned, it is time for you to have a chance to win a couple of pizzas. Our uh, trivia question comes your way, courtesy of Portessi frozen pizza and cheese fries. There are many pizzas. There is only one for Tessie. Phone number to call today is 342-1010. 342-1010. First person to give Caleb 
the correct answer. We'll get a couple of pieces from Cortesi. And I thought we, John came up with actually an excellent trivia question, and we're going to save it because I had one that I thought anyway, or I'm hoping is perhaps more timely. Of course, as many of you know, Pointers just uh, coming off a weekend trip out to Virginia to uh, New, uh, Newport News and uh, played a couple of games against Wilmington, Ohio, and then Christopher Newport and came home with a couple of hard-fought wins. In the process, we did a little sightseeing on the day off, and it was really nice. I uh, got to go to Colonial Wilmington, uh, and also uh, we went to Monticello, Monticello or Monticello. Uh, the um, locals said Monticello. Yeah, no, I always say Monticello, but the locals were clearly saying Monticello. So, see, I learned something. Yeah. I agree with you on that. Yep. I'm glad that you corrected me on that one because that is exactly what they think. They put the cello and cello there, I guess. So anyway, and then right at the end of our final day, uh, the guys got a chance to go to the University of Virginia and visit their uh, John Paul Jones Arena where the uh, Cavaliers play. And in the process, they didn't get to see Tony Bennett, whom all of you know is uh, the head coach there. But there's a young man that is an assistant coach for Virginia. That is a uh, UW Stevens Point graduate and a former pointer basketball player. And I think most of all of you know Mr. Brad Soderberg. And the guys, I think, John, to a man, really thought that was pretty cool to meet Brad. And they got a you know, first-hand tour of uh, their arena. Sure, he's number one assistant. I'll bet Brad spent a good hour with our guys. Uh, the, yeah, what a what a great great visit. Yeah, he uh, had some words for the guys, et cetera. So I thought, well, let's delve back just a little bit. And many of you know that uh, Brad, of course, uh, grew up here, uh, played at Stevens Point with Shelley under the direction of his father, who unfortunately recently passed away. And uh, again, we, to the Soderbergh family, send our condolences. And uh, it's, a, it's a tight-knit family, so they will be okay, as they say, but you never get over that kind of hurt, so we wish them the best. Let's uh, stick with a Brad Soderbergh question here today. So some of you do and some of you don't know that Brad actually started his career at a different college and then transferred in here to play for head coach Dick Bennett. So our question is a twofold. Number one, where did Brad Soderbergh start his collegiate career? And yes, he did play basketball at that other school as well. And when he was a pointer, what uniform number did he wear? Three, four, two, ten, ten. We're going to make you work a little bit for today's trivia question. So you think of the UVA being the Division One national champion. What a what a Stephen Point connection they have. I mean, of course, Tony. Everybody knows Tony Bennett grew up right here in Stephen Point, and his dad Dick was our coach. Then you've got Brad, um, and we're able to get a quick visit from from uh, Sam Sam Hauser, who you know left Marquette, transferred to Virginia. He he stopped by for a visit. He's a fast draft teammate of Bo Rose yep. as well in those three state championship teams. And then uh, help me out, Scotty, there's an athletic associate yep. athletic director, Eric, also Bacher. From Eric Bacher, also from Stevens Point area senior high. So uh, pretty well represented out at Virginia. Virginia. Tony, so yep. there's that connection. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Virginia has a lot of uh, Wisconsin connections. There you go. We better get to our stats. Stats are brought to you by Kerber Rose, certified public accountant. Formerly, Lakeman and Willie, your strategic business advisor and accountant at Stevens Point. John has that. Thanks, Scotty. For our visitors today, the Flying Dutchman of Hope University, they finished the first half 11 of 24, 46%, just 2 of 5 from behind the three-point line, 40%, right on their season average. And uh, only 5 of 11 from the free-throw line for 45%. Uh, rebounding statistics today are exactly the same. Both teams with 17 total boards, both teams with three offensive rebounds. Rounding out the uh, Flying Dutchman's line, they had six assists to go with 10 turnovers, two block shots, and uh, a steal. For our pointers in the first half, 13 of 36 more shots than uh, Hope. 
43%. Six of 15 from behind the three-point line. That's a nice 40%. You'll take that and a perfect 4-4 four, four from uh, the foul line. Eight assists to go with seven turnovers. Five steals for the pointers in the first half and a blocked shot. Bench scoring in that first half. Uh, Hope outscored uh, pointers from the bench 15 to 8. Turnovers went way up. Stephen outscored Hope 13 6, converting uh, their 13 or their 10 turnovers, excuse me, into 13 Stephen point, uh, uh, points. Biggest lead of the game 9 by Stephen Point. Uh, best, uh, biggest lead by Hope has been just 2. And of course, uh, going into halftime, the Score at half, 36-29, favor up a pointer. All right, pointers with a seven-point lead as we get ready for the start of the second half. On your final score, Sports Bar and Grill scoreboard, plan your before or after game get-togethers at the final score, second of Maria Stevens Point points, 36 and Hope, 29. And I call Hope a university. My apologies. Apologies. It's Hope College. It is Hope College. It is. I still don't play on with me. I guess I'm not very smart understand the difference between the university and the college. I know there's some kind of a difference. I don't think it really matters much. You go to classes, you get a degree, but uh, there is a designation. There is a difference between the two. Yep, my bad. Let's get it right. So what is the difference? Do you understand fully? No, I don't. So we're just, if we call it university and it's college, sorry. If we call it college and it's university, sorry. As but it really doesn't matter. As I recall, you know, when Years ago, when it was my time to go to college, a lot of universities would have me. A lot of colleges would not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Hope with the basketball to start off the second half. Hackers would send it back up on top to Thomas. He'll go left side with the dribble. Again, Spray picked up out in the corner. Finds a relief. Back over to the right wing. It'll go to Lewis now. Lewis trying to work against Kinnett. Takes him into the lane. Kicks it to the corner. Hope for three. Got it. That was Calvin Hacker, uh, number 23 again. He's had a nice game. He makes them go. So the pointer's lead is down to four at 36-32. Play Kirky off to Ethan Bublitz. Working left side again to Thomas now. Over to Kerner, right side to Brandon Spray. Drives it to the right elbow, picks up, throws it to Kerner. Right back to Brandon on the right block to a cutting Ethan Bublitz lay -in. That's when we're at our best, when we have cutters coming through that lane. Backside cut, easy two. Always with an Ethan Bublitz style player, you have got to keep your head in the proper spot because they will take advantage when you turn it. They go to the rack. Up and give Brandon Spray credit for finding them. Thomas got up inside over lay to call. There was, there was contact. I'll be honest with you. I think it was late. It was late, but I think it's the right call. I think he waited until after the missed shot to make that call. I don't... I mean, the rebound was already secured when he finally decided to blow the whistle. Now, Brandon was trying to stay vertical, and, you know, a case can be made that Thomas took the ball into his arms. But when you're down inside and you don't have the right position, uh, usually you're not going to get the call. Free throw does not go for... Uh, Evan Thomas. Oh, they continue to struggle from the line yeah. guy, you know, just five of 12. That's three on Brandon, though, so you've got to be yeah. out thinking about getting him out. I'm guessing, anyway, right? Well, they're I mean, talking about, we have a discussion with our coaches at the scorer's table, and I'm wondering uh, if, if, if they don't think that, that that is correct. They're talking about the halftime stats, but our halftime stats show the two fouls, Scotty. Yeah, yeah, I... So that would be three. So that should be accurate. So. Wow. Well, they're going to call it the second personal. They are. So no, I don't. That defies everything. Well, I, you know, now they put four up on the board. That can't be right, is it? it certainly can't be four. Well, now they have four, so now they don't have anything which I'll take. <laughs> well, Brandon, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what. Brandon is still on the floor, so it's not four. We're going to go with two. And I and I don't know how that's possible. Well, our stats said he had two. Yeah. Spray will come in off the right side. Oh, beautiful play by Brandon. Had a double clutch at the rim to try to avoid a block. He did, and he laid it off the glass. That's about as aggressive as we've seen Brandon. Yep, strong move. 40-32, lob inside, Granger yeah, over the lane. Boy, what? Tell you what, all his nice. points come from Kelvin Hacker. He is a nice player. He just is 
He should be quarterback on their football team because he puts the ball right on the money. Aaron Canez out to spray and to the left side. Jumper is good. Ethan Bootless with three, I believe. It was. I was right now. Yeah. Now he's two out of three from behind the three point line. He said he couldn't shoot out there, John. Well, statistically, yeah. he's had a, a little bit of a slow year. That's don't why they say tip that time, but recovered in the corner by Thomas. Corners lead it by nine. Thomas drives it into the paint, kicks it out to Granger, back over Hacker for three off the rim, rebound underneath Clay Gerke. You know, Spray starting Granger. It's not a matchup. I like only because of Brandon's two fouls. Apparently two fouls. Yes. Spray gets it into the hands of Bublitz down to the right corner. Ethan fakes the three, got it to Spray right back to Ethan. Trying to take Hackard. Baseline fade away, left that short. Rebounded by Gam. Yeah, tough shot fading baseline 15. Gam yeah. Thomas front court quickly to the rack and he missed the layup. Now left hand just came up a tad short off the glass. Bublitz will bring it up. Bounces it off to Kerner, kicks to the right corner. Erky for three off the rim. No, and the rebound to Hacker. He'll push. He has to have to try to get back. That pass deflected by Spray, picked up by Erky. Now, the ill advised pass had to go a long ways through traffic. Erky will work the dribble all the way to the baseline, got caught up, and then he gets tied up. Yep. And that will give it back the point. Good. All right. Good, hard defensive play by Evan Thomas to tie him up. Just a freshman. Bone and Joint Clinic, four convenient locations across Central Wisconsin, including Clover. Learn more at bonejoint.net. In will come Jake Boner. And who else came in there? You know, is this uh, Sam Bree? Is this half Wayne Don? We'll see. We'll see how their legs stay being hope, how their legs stay. You know, Platteville really forces you to play hard. Yeah, they do. Aaron Kinez. Down the left side of the lane, but pulls it out. Sends it to Ethan off to Brandon Spray. Drops it in right block. Kerner back to Brandon. Back to Maddie. Three ball off the rim. No. Rebound. Owner. Off it'll go there to Granger on ahead. Front court with it is Lewis. Works from left to right across the top of the circle. Goes to Hackard. They'll get it in deep. Three blocked away by Spray. Picked up by Kerner. Brandon. Boy, playing some deep. Playing a little more intense, shall I say. He's going to launch the three up the front of the rim, but Erky comes out of there with it. Yeah, he'll advise shot, yeah. and Blake bailed him out. He'll go back out to Bublitz. He thought he had a, a rhythm, but missed it. It'll go to Spray, makes oh. the shot, and that foul. Yeah, I think it's going to be on the big guy, Preston Granger. That would be his third, Scotty. First foul of the second half. Was it on Gam or was it on Granger? Well, one of the two. And you were so right, Granger. Granger. Yeah, no, I saw the hole. So that's a, that's a big third foul right. for the Flying Dutchman. 15.58 to go. Stevens point up by 9. 43.34. Let's take a 30-second break. We're coming right back. Pointers basketball on WCCS. 7 5 5 for Tessie for Pizza, it's a name you know. It's the name you associate with the best frozen pizza around. For Tessie Pizzas are made with Wisconsin mozzarella, fresh ingredients, and a sauce with a secret recipe that has been handed down for generations. Whether you're getting together with family and friends or just having a quiet night in, a Portessi original style pizza or cheese fry or two or three is the best way to any pizza lover's heart. There are many pizzas, but there is only one for Tessie. to go here and Stevens Point up by nine right now and we did get a trivia winner which we will get in just a moment but John uh, can update us on some stats but up here in the first uh, what four minutes oh two of five forty percent one of two from behind the arc oh for two from the free throw line that's a growing story for the flying Dutchman just five of 13 they trail by nine and they have missed eight free throws some of those front ends of bonuses Pointers, three of seven. They've hit uh, just one uh, of four from behind the arc. That was from Ethan Bublitz, and they have yet to hit a free throw. Each team with one team foul. Point will inbound under its own basket. The stats still show Brandon with three personal fouls. So I'm not sure where we're at here. Maybe they're just trying to let him play through it, but uh, 
Wow. Ethan Bublitz went yeah. between the circles. They do, and the, and the PA announcer actually said two, that they had changed it to two. So I'm I'm at a loss. Aaron Kinez to the free throw line to Kerner for three off the mark, and we'll get a rebounding foul. I do believe on Hope. Yep, Blake Gerke so active. You know he's like he's he's always moving, always looking for a spot to secure a, a rebound. He does his rebounding uh, with with movement and quickness. So the pointer will inbound again. That's two fouls on the Flying Dutchman. Spray will throw it in very long to the backcourt. Ethan Bublitz goes to get it up wisely, letting that go to the backcourt so he didn't have an over-back situation. Yep. Ethan, right wing, down to the baseline, lean in off the glass, can't get it to go. A lot of contact. Well, well no whistle. Uh, ran into a double team. Owner brings it up, stopped at the top of the circle. Over here to go out of the right side to Dykehouse, running baseline, got caught, threw it off of Bublitz, but it didn't go out of bounds. Picked up by Brandon Spray. Brandon having a nice game. Kind of amazing how that ball did not go out of bounds, isn't it? Booblets. Free throw line off the spray. Takes a step in. Kick out. Ethan. Three. Got it. And you know what? Brandon had a layup. He just pulled out of it. Take the pass instead. Biggest lead of the game at 12 now. 46-34. Dykehouse to the free throw line. Out it'll go to Granger. Handoff pass to George over the top of the circle. There's Back door cut. There's Spray's. Third, or is it going to be his fourth? Yeah. <laughs> Best I can tell you. Yes, that time he got caught just momentarily watching the ball. And when you look at a ball with both eyes and you get back cut, it doesn't usually uh, go well for you because uh, they've got the step before you get the step. And uh, that's the case. He ended up getting the foul. George, pardon me, Dykehouse inbounds it. It goes into the corner to George, up to Granger. They'll lob it deep, but couldn't connect with three, taken away by the pointers. Bublitz into the front court, a ton of bother, takes it down the lane, off the glass, too strong. How did they not get a foul there? Yeah, here Pulling away by Erky, back over to Moose. He had Bublitz underneath, and the pointers will slow it down. I mean, that was a foul that should have been with Yeah, we're going to get a timeout, because we're playing a little Houser Skelter right now in that sequence. Coach, uh, I'm happy with that they didn't get the foul at, at half court. Uh, you got to get that foul called. I mean, that's too much hacking to go uh, and let well, go, that's and, for sure. And, and Coach is not at all happy about it. And, and the reason, and I'll tell you why, is who it was against. He feels, and and, and, and he knows watching you know, all the film, that Ethan gets no respect at all. He, he feels that Ethan oftentimes gets, gets bumped and fouled and hacked. And for some reason, he doesn't, he doesn't get those calls. And he clearly... That's a great example right there, Scotty, where he clearly got hacked and didn't get the foul. So Coach trying to defend his player, who uh, he feels doesn't get any respect. He, you know, he said that throughout last night. Right on that. Yep. I mean, there was definitely a foul that didn't get whistled. That was, they, missed, way to go. they missed some, right? I guess so. Sweat's Oil Company, you'll find it all at Sweat's Country Corner and Blanker. Sweat Roadside Convenience Store, Stevens Point. Stop in, meet their friendly staff. All in one stop convenience. Pointers have the 12-point lead. It'll go off to Erky out on the left wing. It'll hold for a moment out to Matt Kerner. Looks at a cutter, comes to the right side. Working dribble against Gam. Takes him into the lane. Out it'll go to Kinez. Aaron runs it down the lane. Left hand left. He rolled it off the rim. He's got to finish that. Oh, yep. right there. You got it. You absolutely got to finish. Back house in the circle. Down the lane. Stops up. Bounces it on the baseline. And now we'll get a foul. Matt Kerner again. Trailing. You know, and... And, and that's, you know, that's not a foul you want to take. I'm, and no disrespect to Ryan Gam, but, you know, he's only averaging 4-7, not a great free throw shooter. He's in there as a blocker and a mover and, and a rebounder. Uh, he's not a guy you need to take the foul though. 46-34, it'll go right side here to George. George working, picked up the dribble, long cross court. They'll launch one and hit it, and that was Dykehouse. That's a big shot for Hope the that and we've got some guys with three fouls, so long ways to go with those three fouls. Zach Moose, yep, still 13, 30 to go in the ball game. Kinez to Erky, spin move into the lane, no shot available, out to Moose. Around it'll go to Aaron Kinez, off the high screen, that was a big contact. They'll go to Moose, to the elbow, out to Aaron, a deep three, off the front of the rim, Moose had rebound. Did he get fouled or did he, he get did. fouled? He got fouled. You know, Zach is 6'2", but he's also a good rebounder. Yeah, he's aggressive. Yep. 
That he is. And he's strong. Yep. You know, he's a good player at Merrill, just like his brother. You know, they were very aggressive players. Zach a little bit better offensively. I don't think that his brother will deny that, although he'll tell you that. Uh, I think Chaz will tell you that one-on-one -on -one he takes his brother, but that's okay. Booglitz with it. I think that's what he said the last time we talked anyway. Blake Kirky on the right baseline trying to take it in against Granger. Out it'll go to Kerner down the left of the lane. Out it'll go to Knez. Aaron's got to connect pretty soon. That's another one. Yeah, I'm not he's sure. For today. You know, and I'm not sure he's the one we want taking those threes. Dyke out into the lane over to the left corner. Pulls the dribble back out high. Pointers up by nine right now. Jam over to the right side. They'll get there to Thomas. 13 on the shot clock. Dyke house kicks left corner wide open. Three ball bears. You know, we helped off the strong side corner, and you just can't do that because you're never going to get back to the shooter. Down to a six point lead. It'll go to Aaron Kinez. Across the way to Kerner. Into the corner, it'll go there to Blake Gerke. Gerke takes it to the lane. Here comes the double team. Blake sends it out. Kinez. Oh, that's going to get an offense. Oh, oh. oh. Aaron must be getting a benefit here. Well, from my angle, he did. And when what what I'm saying from my angle is the left arm. Yeah, no question. No, maybe, maybe there wasn't a great uh, position on the baseline, but, you know, from my position, the left arm is what caused the contest. Turner out, Timberman in. 46-40, 12-21 to go. Yeah, we're not going to see some of these guys with three fouls, guys, probably until the eight-minute mark. So a big 4-21 here uh, to get through. Inbound to Bublitz, trying to work in the right corner. Takes the dribble to the free throw line and then gives it off to Erkey. Skip pass over the top. They'll kick it out to Kinez. Kinez got bottled up, finds Bublitz. Bublitz. Crossover dribble down the right side of the lane. Pull-up jumper off the mark. Tipped up by Timmerman. No rebound move. I think Timmerman yeah. out of the back there, Scotty, is yeah. going to get the foul. That foul call came late, too. That sure did. But it's the right one. That'll be the first down Peter. Fourth down the pointers. Your 12-point lead down to six right now. Kinez will take a seat. Garrett Nelson comes back in. All right. Dyke House will bring it into the front court. Left side, they'll get it there into the hands of George. He did a couple of threes on you tonight. Dyke House to the free throw line. Back over to the right wing. It'll go off there to Ficus. Ficus with the hand off to George. Tries to get by Ethan. Does down to the baseline. Got cut off by Herky. Bounces it back on the wing. Ficus finds Thomas. Gets by his man. Pull up jumper off the rim. Tipped out. Hoover to the board. And what do we get here? What was it? I don't know what he called. Oh, that's a flop warning is what he called. Oh, a flop warning. Okay. Yeah. What did he call it? Um, I thought he called it on Garrett. Well, that's a good question. question. One, two, and there's only one, one, two out there right now. That's Garrett Nelson. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who, who he called it on. But it was Garrett a flop Nelson warning. With a dribble. Well, a wow. Dykehouse got away with one. Garrett takes it inside. Four feet. But they just draw the foul. That's going to be a shooting foul, too. Team foul five. Garrett, the ball's getting stuck a little yeah. bit in guys' hands. We're not passing very well at the moment. So. And that breaks down your whole offense. Uh, we, we're at our best when, when we have cutters going through the lane and when the ball is moving through the air and not on the, on the floor. Garrett Nelson at the line is first of two is good. You know, certainly defenses have something to do with that, Scotty. Well, sure. Enough. They get into the, the passing lanes and ball pressure. And, but that, that being said, you know, we've got to run our offense, and our offense is all about movement. Garrett with a pair, and it is back to an eight-point lead right now. Dykehouse will bring it up here for the Flying Dutchman. Came in here with a four-and-two record. Mount pass near the left elbow. Like his handoff pass, Thomas down the lane. He got to the rim and scored. Yeah, him. that was an exchange. He curled around that the, the screen, and we we fouled him around that screen, and that was an easy two. Peter Timberman on the right wing sends it to Boots over to Nelson. Bounce into the baseline corner. It'll go to Bublitz. Back out and over to Garrett Nelson. Nelson picks up his dribble quickly. He almost got in trouble. Boots attack. Nelson with a foul. Well, 
Got it on the right wing, left hand. He was able to get the and one. Well, that's a big one right there. He hits the throw. That's third foul. Get it up by nine again. No, that foul comes against Tyler George. His first. We'll be shooting now with 10.40 to go, Scotty. We'll be, we'll be shooting three throws the rest of this game. Riley Lewis back in here now for Hope. Precision Cellular and Sound. Your home entertainment headquarters, 87 Sunset Boulevard, Park Ridge, right next to Walgreens. Back makes good on the three-point play. 51-42, Dykehouse down to the baseline, almost lost the dribble. Picked it up, bounces it in, jam on the left baseline. We'll cut her down the lane, score it with a foul. Boy, they beat this with some back cut. You know, you got to have your head in that swivel as they talk about where you know where the ball and your man is. And a couple times there, we've we've watched the ball a little bit. And just quickly, they back cut it for scoring opportunities. That was the case right there. We're going to get a 30-second timeout called by Hope. 10.25 to go in the ball game. Let's take that 30-second timeout. We'll come right back. UW Stevens Boy Basketball on WPCS. Hey sports fans, Scott Glinski of Skyward here. From the court to the field, the ice rink to the putting green, on the track and in the classroom, Skyward supports all local and state athletes. Since 1980, our advanced technology solution has been helping school districts improve outcomes, reduce cost, and achieve success for students. Visit us online at skyward.com to learn more and see how Skyward empowers school districts across Wisconsin. Best of luck to all local sports teams this season. All right, 10.25 to go here in this one. Stephen Point with a 51-44 lead at the moment. Well, this half is taking on the flavor of the first one where we've jumped out to a lead to start, and then they battle their way back to the middle. We led this 46-34, up 12. Since that time, they've outscored it 10-5, to make it 11-5. to Thomas makes good on the free throw, so it's back to a six-point ball game. They've cut it in half. Blitz brings it up. Works right side, sends it back out to Zach Booth. He'll hold it there, starts right off to Garrett to the free throw line, down the lane, kicks to the corner, Timmerman, open three, off the rim, Rublitz kept it alive, and he'll come out of there with it, just quicker, you know, getting to the ball, then fight this, he'll drive it in, a lot of contact, Timmerman going baseline, no, but a foul, and that'll be a bonus. I like Peter being a little more aggressive there, too. I do. Peter's really growing into to the road, didn't see a lot of time last year as, as a freshman, but you know, just in our sixth game now this season, you, you see him growing uh, as a player. It takes a little while. It does figure out what coach is looking for. As we said in the first half, John, if you don't play D, you don't play. Not here. Nope. Peter will go to the line for the first time tonight. He has three points in the game. Make it four. We'll get another one. We did get a trivia winner. A guy that has nothing but time on his hands. Probably has every available archive that is known to UW Stevens Point basketball. But he managed to come up with the, the correct answer, Mr. Mike Steinwagner or Marshfield. Well, they, he would know. Yeah, well, he wouldn't know. He'd have to look it up. He certainly wouldn't have capacity to remember all that stuff. He's not old enough. This one comes all the way up. <laughs> He's not old enough. Is Stein older than me? I think he is by about five or ten yeah, years. There's a push off by move. Uh, anyway, back to it. Uh, Mike Steinwegger got the answer. Now, I'm not sure if you know the full answer. I don't. I don't know where he transferred in from. He was a D2 guy? No. He was one not. not. He went to a small private school oh. that we we will see next week. Brad started at Ripon College. Oh. Off the inbound. Oh, a nice catch and shoot that time by Riley Lewis. And there's the three. Another second chance opportunity. Three. Now they wow. got the hands up for a three. It's, wow. I didn't think he was that far out. No. Huh? That yeah, was, with that was a, a two possession, five point lead. We'll get you the answer in a moment. Erky on the baseline. Blake kicks to the corner to Timmerman. Got to get the scoring going. Bublitz for the three in and out, no long rebound. Gam. He'll take one bounce and send it up to Lewis into the front court over to the left side. They get it to Thomas, who has had a pretty good go here in the second half right now. Now those are quick for some of our guards. Yep. It'll go out on the right wing into the hands of the Hackers. It's by Stephen, who recovers defensively. Over to Thomas. 
guarded by Boots. He'll take a deep three and get it caught. Uh-oh. That was he that eating was, it up. Yeah, that was well defended, actually. And just a great shot. Well, you knew it wasn't going to be easy. 8.40 to go in the ball game. Well, he's a 55% three-point shooter, so that wasn't un unusual. Garrett Nelson to the free throw lane. Pulls up for a jumper. Left back short. Turkey tips it out. Mood back to Garrett. Fakes the three. Drives it up. Over it'll go to Timmerman. Back out. Got another full clock here. Ethan with it to the free throw line. Did we get an illegal screen? I can't see what we got. We got a hold. Should be on Gam. It is. Would be his fourth. There was a ball screen and he, he either held the roller, meaning the pick and roll, which, <laughs> or or he, he held the ball handling, which is Ethan. They're gonna get get the foul against Play Turkey. He was he was the one that took the ball screen. was gonna roll and he couldn't roll because he was held. All right. Well, it's down to two points. They've cut this down by ten, Scotty. Yes, they have. Erky at the line. Need every point you can get. He left it short. Uh, not even close. Barely caught the front of the rim. Well, that's like a turnover. All right. A three would give Hope the lead back. They were down by 12 not that long ago. Up on top. Hackard with a dribble. Bounces it. Stolen away by Blake Erky. Erky bothered. Bringing it up to the sideline. And now we're going to get a foul on Hackard. Well, maybe not a bad ball by Hackard, Johnny. The turnover is, is not something you wanted to see if you're a Hope fan, but uh, sure, that, that was going to maybe be a, a two-on-one fast break at the end, and so now they're going to make Blake have to go, and after just missing, uh, almost missing the rim, he's going to have to take a free throw here. All right, eight minutes to go, 53-51. Partners Pub, Cuban Point's birthday headquarters, open 365 days a year. Great food, drinks, entertainment, and company. Anyway, back to the uh, trivia answer. So Brad went to Ripon to begin, and then transferred in for his junior and senior years to play for UW Stevens Point. And when he was a pointer, he wore the same number that Garrett Nelson square, which is 12, number 12. You got it. So there's your answer. Congrats to Mr. Steinwagner. Michael, share that with your wonderful family. Well, you can sure eat up a, a lead in a hurry when you shoot 61%. Yeah. And five of six in the second half from behind the three-point line. We're talking about Hope College. And I contrast that to the pointers who are just 26%, five of 19 only two of ten from behind the three-point arc. So right now, I would say the momentum is uh, well in the hands of the flying Dutchman. Well, that's true, but you can snare that uh, momentum right back with a little bit of, of effort here, I do believe, anyway. So we'll see what happens. Hope comes in shooting 48% on the season and 40% from behind the three-point line. So those are pretty good numbers. Right now, they're sitting on 51% from the floor and 63% from the three-point line. You know, to have a lead against the team that's doing that to you is a, a little bit on the remarkable side, especially when you're shooting only 36% on the game. Yep, Blake Erke will be at the line. This, again, a front end of a one-and-one one after yeah. this. He will shoot two automatically. Yeah, These are big you know, for Blake to come through with now. By the way, uh, the Dutchman will be shooting uh, bonus on the our next foul. Blake makes good on the first. That's better. He's got eight points in the game. Brandon Spray back on the floor as is Matt Turner. So as if this was hockey, what would we say? They're at full strength. Yeah, there you go. Speaking of which, you went to a hockey game last night. I did and they won, so now they probably want me to come back for another. They would love you to have season tickets when you're not uh, working here. Hacker down the right side of the lane, dishes back out. Lewis with it up on top. Stephen Point lead at four. Blake made both free throws. Bounce out on top to Gam. Working against Turner. Ends the pass off here. Hacker got by Ethan. Bounces it to the free throw line. Down the lane. The contact with Blake Turkey. It went out of bounds. Apparently off of Blake. That's four seconds on the shot clock. Plenty of time. See if they do something in the lane with this pass. Got to protect your basket here. And Kerner will defend Gam, if you're wondering, if they look for a lob in. And it's a foul shot. 
got it in and then a foul immediately. That's exactly the play you needed to be aware of was something coming in to the lane with the short shot clock and just weren't ready for it. That will be, well, now they have four on Brandon. So back to where we were before. So apparently they realized as free throw is good for Evan Thomas. He averages 11 three. He's having a heck of a second half right now. Yep, and he really got off the floor. They're six four, and Brandon just didn't get up to the same height. And he's got that one. That was a nice isolation play. And he just let send everybody out of the lane and lobbed it to about six feet in front of the rim, and he went up and got it back to a two point ball game. Ethan Bublis with it at the arc down to the baseline. Kicks it out to Zach Boots, who's back in for spray now. Kerner off to Aaron Kinnett. You know, Brandon was having a great game until the foul trouble. Yep. Down the lane, Boobless, block and got it. Well, your seniors goes and gets you two. Hacker comes left to Lewis, makes the three, gets a step, drives inside, back to Gamp, kick out. This is Hacker down the left side of the lane. Tipped away, got it back, shot won't go, rebound, Steven Point. No well, good defensive stand there. You can never see through coach. I, yeah. can't, I can't see the south end of the court at, at Quad very often. It goes to Berkey. We need to shorten that coach's line back to where it yeah. used to be. Either that or put us more in the middle of the scorer's table. Berkey with a baseline jumper here. Short corner jumper. That was the shoot. Back up by six. Long cross court Thomas to the baseline against Turkey trying to work his side. Got sent down. They get it out here. Gam, high post against Kerner. They will finally get it to Lewis. Drives it inside. Got all the way to the rack and scored a layup. Yep, used the big body of Gam to get some space on the floor. Good drive. 59 55 and timeout. The Dutchman will call a timeout. This will be a one minute timeout. 6 09 to go. On your final score, Sports Bar and Grill scoreboard, it is Stephen Point, 59, and Hope, 55. We'll be back in 30 seconds. UW Stephen Point men's basketball on WTCS. Sprains, strains, and fractures can happen at any time. When you don't have hours to wait in the emergency room, visit one of Bone & Joint's walk-in care locations. You'll be seen by an orthopedic provider who has experience treating injuries affecting your bones, joints, and soft tissues. No appointment is necessary. Most insurance plans are accepted, and it's less expensive than an ER visit. Bone & Joint walk-in care with locations in Medford, Clover, and Wausau. It's just one more way we've been keeping lives in motion for more than 50 years. All right, back out at one still out as our pointers are well they had a 12 point lead at 46 34. Now with 609 to go, it's a four point ball game. Uh good ball game right now. Yeah, the uh, the strangest story is still the Brandon Spray foul situation. I don't know. At some point, people are going to go back and watch the tape, and they're going to get it right. If we're right, that would be great. And if, uh, if it turns out that the foul situation that they officially had, you know, Hope will be a little bit perturbed. Yeah, because he'd be he'd be sitting on the bench now at five. Of course, he wouldn't have been playing with the, right. Yeah, with the four. Fast. It just changes everything from the get go. But uh, Brandon is, is, is having such a good early start of this game. He spent most of his half sitting, and uh, certainly I think that's been a major factor yeah. in uh, losing that 12 point lead. But that's part of the game. You got to stay on the floor, right? Ethan Bublitz brings it up for Stevens Point pointers by four. Gives it off to Matt Kerner. He's going to have to come up big with spray down right now. He'll go to Mooch in the right corner. Mooch works dribble against Hacker. He'll send it up on top to Aaron Cadet to a cutting knee. And boom, it's down the lane. Nobody foul. Yep. Well, and here's where Ethan can take over the game. You know, 6 2 and long. He's got that great long stride. He gets on you and by you in a hurry. Woodworth will get a pair. That is the third now on Jake Honer. Ethan's first is on the way. He caught the rim. He made 20 of 22 in Virginia. 22 of 22. Like, dude, what did I say? He said 20 of 22. Oh, 22 of 22. Excuse me. Perfect. 
and by our recollection, not one of the 22 hit the rim. He's allowed to hit the rim once. There are 22 swishes out of 22 attempts. This one is perfect, just like that one. Yep. 61.55 pointers from Rock and Roll Cafe. They're open seven days a week with extended hours. Thursday through Saturday, stop in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Both teams have four timeouts left if they need them. Thomas into the left corner will go there to Lewis. Lewis works again. Darren Cadet. We'll get it right back. And Hacker gets a step on Aaron. Pull up in the lane and got it to go. That's tough because he took him hard off the dribble and then just did that little 10 foot fadeaway. Really tough to guard that. 61 57. Aaron Cadet, free throw line extended out on the left sideline up to Matt Kerner. He'll get it to Bublitz, works through some traffic. Over it'll go on the left wing. That's Zach Boots with it. Man to man defense. Kinez drives into the lane. A little scooping up and under layup. And he got one. That's what Aaron said is best when he's, when he's going to the rim. 63 57, and an offensive foul is going to be whistled. Big collision over on the right side of the floor. And they're both players getting up slowly. Kelvin Hackert holding his side. I hope that's on him. That'll be yeah. his third. I hope his ribs are okay. Wow. Are we going to get to shoot here? Is that a screening foul? Well, they don't, they don't. Nope. that should be a control. Yep. Well, we'll I will take it out of bounds. Sorry, I get blocked out by this guy. You ever coaches the uh, basketball team? Have you ever had you ever had track your broken ribs? I have not, and I just hope that I don't. Not something you want to deal with. Not saying that that's what happened. Don't get me wrong with Hackers. But uh, underneath it'll go to Erky. Is fouled by Thomas. Just a split second, you would have been going for an and one. Yeah, he got freed on a backside screen. Cut hard baseline. Pass came with timing perfectly. Caught and turned. And uh, Evan Thomas with the foul. That'll be his fourth. Yep, Erky will go to the line. First is good. Got the foul. Back up by seven is Stevens Point right now. Well, free throws have been the difference so far in this game, guys. Final score, Sports Bar and Grill scoreboard. Watch your favorite teams. Enjoy the daily food and drink specials at the final score. Second to Maria Stevens Point. Made a post. Back up by eight is Stevens Point. 65-57, trying to get another win to start off the year. It'll go there to Tyler George. Hand off pass to Lewis. Lewis against Aaron into the right corner to Thomas. Thomas holds it against Aaron. Off the screen, make that uh, Lewis. So. Nice uh, cover that time by Maddie Turner on the switch. Turner inside. Ooh, Google got knocked to the floor by a screener. A little rough, uh, I'm going to say that. I'm going to say that's a Granger. Granger. That'd be a guess. I don't, I don't know that Preston Granger and Coach Greg Mitchell agree with that. i tell you, uh, Ethan Boobit sold that ball. Sold it really well. well it, and that could be, but it looked to me like he got hammered pretty good. Yeah. He bent way backwards. Yeah. Well, it's going to be five on Granger. You are correct. Well, and, you know, he's our leading scorer and leading rebounder. Everything uh, flows to Mr. Granger in the middle. So that's a huge fifth foul. A lot of fouls get involved here this afternoon. Ethan Bublitz with us. Long cross work. Kinez into the lane. Out to Kerner. Left side triple. Got it. Addy Kerner coming up. He's got 10 in the pointers lead. Back up to 11. It's been so much energy to get back close. And then a little run. And then right timeout. back down by double digits. Timeout's going to be taken here by Hope. As John pointed out, 3.55 to go. This is a one-minute break. Let's take 30 seconds of that break, and we will come right back. This is UW Stevens Point Men's Basketball on WPCN. Partners Pub and Grill is proud to be a UWSB sports sponsor. They offer daily food and drink specials, homemade soups and pizzas, karaoke on Thursdays, as well as a DJ on Wednesdays. They're open 365 days a year. Partners is your birthday headquarters. You'll receive free rail drinks or tap beer for free all day on your birthday. The Four Pointer Sporting Events, stop in and enjoy a burger with a beer and take their shuttle to the game and back. Partners Pub and Grill, located at 2600 Stanley Street, Stevens Point. That's what we had. And I said, well, we're just going to look at it. 3.55 to go here. 
in this basketball game, barring an overtime. Stevens Point 68 and Hope 57. Final score sports bar and grill scoreboard. Well, in other action so far today, Oshkosh was over in Michigan. They did not like the fact that they lost to Alma, Michigan last night, 88-81. The Titans come back with an 89-50 win over Calvin today. Oh, Calvin, by the way, knocked off Whitewater last night, 81-66. Whitewater playing at Alma today. One women's game today, River Falls playing up north at Finlandia. Big possession. Bounce pass on the floor to Dykehouse. Dykehouse robbed it right side and threw it too high and threw it away. Well, you don't see too many lobs to the corner, do you? And his hacker's back on the floor. He's not. And he was hurt, you know, in that, that yeah. offensive foul. And he's, he's really been their, their point guard, their floor general leader. So it's tough on them without him. Ethan into the lane, kicks to the corner. Zach Boots passed it up. That's all right. Use a little more clock. Turner with it. Turner hands it off to Kinez up on top. Sets the screen. Aaron works left. Comes back with the dribble down the left side of the lane. Got bodied up. Needs some help. Kicks it to Kerner. Kerner, a lean in at the horn off the front of the rim. Gam with a rebound. Well, the only thing good about that was he used 30 seconds. Yeah. It'll go quickly up. Horner with it. Got it back to Thomas. He's been hot. Doesn't take the shot. Lewis high left. He'll launch a deep three off the rim. No, who's got the rebound? Play Gerke, I think. Yeah, ill advised shot, but when you're down 11, you get a little bit anxious, I guess. Up the 857, under three minutes to go in the ball game. Ethan tried to direct a little bit of traffic here. Stopped his dribble, looked at Ergy to a cutting Aaron Kness, oh, hey. off his knee and out of bounds. That was a tough pass for Aaron to handle. Yeah, it was. Didn't have a lot of spacing, and he was coming off a pretty tough pearl cut. Auto select, quality dependable auto repair and service performed by qualified technicians that you can trust. A lot of times, uh, that's for sure. By the way, Pack out is back, Hackard is back on. Glad to see he's okay. 68 57 points. Thomas, top of the circle, three off the rim. Rebound, Hoopler. Uh, he's been hot this half. This that one. Good look. And as brings it up for Stevens Point to the top of the circle. Over to the right wing to Zach Moot. Blake Gerke to the free throw lane. Kick out, Kerner. Three. Got it. And now Kerner. It's third of the game. He just loved sitting on that three-point line. That was kind of his shot in high school, wasn't it? Yeah, that's what they tell me. I never saw him play in high school, but everybody told me how good of an outside shooter he was. We're starting to see it here. Owner up on top to Gam. Gets it right back. 71-57 points. Trip. And they're going to call a foul. It looked to me like he fell down in his cell. It does to me too, Scotty, but... Uh, I'm sure the foul is going to be on Matt Kerner. Yeah, I'm sure the playing Dutchman are feeling that uh, they've gotten the better of the officiating today. Good. Pretty well officiated. Yeah. That's four on Matt now. Yeah. A lot of people in foul trouble. We don't always have that. but yeah. And we don't crew is that they've been uh, consistent. Uh, when we don't have the depth across our front line. Kind of play with, well, maybe four, huh? Yeah. Tyler George. Front end of a one and one, and he got the first. He's got seven points in the game right yeah. now. He's a 60 percent free throw shooter coming into tonight. He was six of ten. Minute 55 to go in this one. Second one also good. Got a nice, nice release on that shot. 155 to go. Stevens point up 71-59. Yeah, they're going to get Gam off the floor for no other reason. They're going to go. Just not a good free throw shooter. Wilkins is in right now. They're going to go full press, uh, full court, although it's pretty token. Erky to the free throw line over to the right side. Moves wide open. Three, that's offline. He had too much time. Yeah, it might have been too much. He had such a, a long look at it. Hacker to the top of the circle, down the right side of the lane to the baseline. Kicks it back up on top. Bike is runs it into the lane. Spin move, and he got the roll. And there's the timeout. Well, oh, down to a 10-point game with a minute 29 to go and a 30-second timeout. Still we're going to be taken here. As we as we well know, there's plenty of work to do. Well, you got pointers. Right. Pointers trailed by 10 with about 65 seconds to go. 
a week ago against Wilmington and outscored him 11 1 to, to win that game. 129 to go. Your final score Sports Bar and Grill scoreboard shows Stevens Point up by 10 at 71 61. Point coming in here allowed just 62 points a game. So you have to pitch a shutout the rest of the way, John. So, that you do it? Did come in averaging 70 point six or 71 points a game. We're right there. So the game just ended. Everything is good. We'll be right where we want to be. No good well, scoring. Well, big possession. You know, that, that last one probably Matt took that a little silver. They just didn't guard them. And, and I could just see the wheels turning. Well, I got to shoot this. But yeah. actually, no, you didn't. <laughs> no, in reality, he did inbound. It'll come to Kinev. They are coming full court right now. Aaron bounces it over to Zach Boop. Point does a good job getting it into the front court. Off it'll go to Aaron Kinez, high left corner. Bothered there by George. Aaron works dribble. Gives it up now to Boot. Double team comes right at the timeline. Off to Kinez in the lane. Had it poked away. Loose on the floor. We'll get a, well, I thought we would get a jump ball out of it. Didn't tie him up. Off on the left side. It'll go there. George into the lane. Down the lane. Off the rim. No. Rebound to Zach Boot. Well, dodge one there. Turnover. And Good. no foul whistle, no? Now that is a foul. Yep. Trailing behind, that foul is going to come on Joe Wilkins. That will be his first, I do believe. And Ethan Bublitz will get two. Well, we're at right a 10-point lead. That's four possessions. You would think a 12-point lead with 51-8 to go would, would be enough to seal the game. Well, that's four shots. Yeah, <laughs> four threes. <laughs> but we, yeah. have, we've seen so many strange things over the years that you just sort of take yeah. it in and over until it's over. Oh, and there's, there's one right there. Yeah. First missed the free throw. Yeah, first missed free throw in what would be today? Uh, he was the two of two. So, you know, that's at least 28 of 28 he had going. Yep. All right. He'll get another one, get another streak going. How's that sound? Yep. 52 seconds to go in this one. His second free throw. He missed them both. Well, the rebound off the pick is once you know. You're going to miss. You're going to miss. I guess. Well, up they come. Into the lane. Tough drive, but missed the shot that time by Hacker. You know, he ran into Matt Turner, who held his face, went vertical, and he just forced it. A, an altered shot. A, a good defensive help by Matty Turner, who's going to walk down now and get two of his own. Yep, Kerner will shoot a pair, and the clock has rolled down to 40.6 seconds to go. That, by the way, three now on Ryan Gam out of Rockford, Michigan, 6'7", junior. Matt Kerner at the stripe, and he makes that three, three out of three so far. Uh, he's maybe my player of the games guy. He might be onto something there. And Matty's got a ball. You know, Brandon has not come on the floor, so apparently he did foul up. Either that or they're just going with what they have. Into the right corner, Bickus attacks, and he got a layup. Right, move timeout. Bickus 6 5, freshman. Out of Hawthorne Woods, Illinois. Averages just not two. Uh, averages two points a game coming into today. All right. Another timeout. Let's take a timeout as well. This is a one minute break. We will take it and come right back. Pointers lead at 73 63. DW Stevens Point Basketball on WQTS. Once you realize that you're standing inside of a giant beer barrel, you'll know that this isn't just another restaurant. Now go on, open the door. And come on into the Hilltop Pub and Grill. Grab a hot off the grill burger with dozens of topping options. Steaks that always satisfy, or go for the fish fry. Now, you don't have to wait till Friday. It's served every day. The Hilltop Pub and Grill has 19 beers on tap, including 13 Wisconsin brews and a menu loaded with flavor. The Hilltop Pub and Grill, just west of I-39 and Highway 10 Interchange in Stevens Point. Hey, sports fans. Scott Glinski of Skyward here. From the court to the field, the ice rink to the putting green, on the track and in the classroom. Skyward supports all local and state athletes. Since 1980, our advanced technology solution has been helping school districts improve outcomes, reduce costs, and achieve success for students. Visit us online at skyward.com to learn more and see how Skyward empowers school districts across Wisconsin. Best of luck to all local sports teams this season. All right, 
Greg Stevens point will inbound. 31 seconds remain, and the pointers lead it by 10. Erky gets it down the floor to Kinez, whose pass is deflected away and out of bounds. Boy, he passed that right yeah, to yeah. Erky. Was, if they had stolen that, it would have been a layup. Yep. And a potential three-point play because Blake would have almost for sure tried to block it, and you never know. Anyway, and he moved. Yeah, he moved. So he can't move. That's, can't move that's that traveling. One. I mean, that's just losing your sense of what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Not a good inbound. No, I, I don't, Blake there. just kind of lost his uh, yep. concentration there. So inbound to Thomas from the corner. He probably was fouled. Didn't hit it. Nice save that time by Erky back to Kerner. Well, it was a great closeout by Zach Booth. Boy, it's kind of been a sloppy last couple of minutes yeah. by both by both squads. I'm going to get a couple of young guys in with a 10-point yeah. lead. Well, it's parent day. I'm sure he wants yeah. to give them the opportunity to play in front of mom and dad. Well, Preston Granger will be interesting to see how many minutes he ends up with for, for Hope Scotty, the leading scorer and rebounder. He's kind of been saddled with foul troubles this entire game. Bo Rosenthal will make his debut here. So you get uh, four out of the five. And Isaac uh, Wolfer will come in for Matt Kerner. So Matt, if he can make a couple of free throws, gets Isaac on the floor. Well, at least if he can make this one, he missed the first. Yevon Sockchin is in. Caden Clark. Brady Wagner. Bo Rosenthal. And Matty's second one is good. That will get Isaac Wolfer into the game. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how Bo Rosenthal joins and, and, and works with his team as time goes on. I tell you, this guy, he's played on three of the best high school teams in the history of our state. So he's been on the floor with an awful lot of talent. Yep. It comes inbound. Hackard over the top of the circle. Gives to the corner. Bickus the three off the rim. Backside rebound by the Flying Dutchman. Into the lane. Tough shot. We're going to get a foul call down. Sakchin, I believe. That's back. Yep. 6'6 six, six freshman. 250 pounder out of Manila. He's kind of a project for the pointers. I don't mind some projects once no, in a while. They like his size. Obviously, uh, you can't make him any bigger. Jay Corner would free throw good. Good practice guy from what I've good team guy. Told. Yep, he's yep. a real, real good team bump guy. And bang. Yeah, you need some of that in there. And hopefully develop over the four years one of those guys on the player one of those guys on the bench that's always uh, cheering and, and supporting his, his, his teammates Brady Wagner walks it up hope not going to follow and the clock will run out Stevens Point improved to 6-0 and on the year who saw that coming Stevens Point 74 and the hope flying Dutchman 65 let's take a two minute break we'll come right back UW Stevens Point Men's Basketball on WTCF. If you're suffering from hip, knee, or shoulder pain, visit the specialists at Stevens Point Orthopedics, formerly Klasinski Clinic Orthopedics. The experts at Stevens Point Orthopedics will work with you to get you back to what matters most, like your family, hobbies, or career. From your orthopedic issues to sports medicine and even in-house physical therapy, trust Stevens Point Orthopedics to help you win the fight against pain. Stevens Point Orthopedics, world-class treatment, hometown care. Call our office today and schedule an appointment or visit at stevenspointortho.com to learn more. Everyone is always looking for ways to get more. And at Portesi Frozen Pizza and Cheese Fries, we've decided to take that concept to the oven. We have cooked up a new style pizza that has the same classic Portesi taste you've been 